What's growing on gardeners? It's October 2020. The cold weather is going to be rolling in soon and today I'm going to show you how to convert an existing raised bed into a heated hinged hoop house where you can control the heater from anywhere in the world with the touch of your smartphone. For the materials that I'm using for this build, everything will be listed in the video description and for any of the parts that you may have to buy that you don't know what they are, they will be linked in my Amazon storefront underneath greenhouse accessories. I'd like to give a shout out to the YouTube channel, The Gardening Channel with James Prigioni. He has a great video on how to build a hinged hoop house and I borrowed some of the tips from his video because some of them were really smart and they made the build a lot easier. So this is really an amalgamation between some of the tips that he had and some of the things in my own mind that I used to add and improve to the design. Right in front of me is my raised garden bed. It is made out of pressure treated 2x8s and there's a lot of bad information floating out there about pressure treated wood that is mostly myth uh, left over from 20 years ago when the common method of treating pressure treated lumber was using arsenic called CCA. Uh, they still use that to make wood utility poles today and railroad ties but it's been illegal for residential use for something like 20 years. The pressure treated lumber that you buy at Lowe's or Home Depot uses copper azole which is non-toxic. Uh, in fact, you can use liquid copper fungicide uh, organically. You can buy the, the concentrate, which I do, and I have to use it to treat my tomatoes here. However, uh, in order to build my raised garden bed, I need to build rails along the sides of my garden bed uh, because I need something for the top hinge to bolt to. So we're gonna have to build two layers here and I am not going to use pressure treated wood for that because it has a habit of warping. So here I have regular untreated number two pine, uh, the cheapest stuff you can buy at Lowe's and Home Depot. And I coated this with uh, boiled linseed oil, which is a drying oil, and that will help add years of life uh, to the lumber. That way it will be protective and it'll last several years. So the way that we are going to design our rail system is that the outside of the wood is flush with the outside of the raised bed. That way this wood hangs in and that will allow us to uh, make it as strong as possible. The other thing that we want to make sure that we do is we want the wood to run long ways along the shorter width of the, of the, uh, the raised bed. And the reason why this needs to be that way is because we are going to place our hinge back here. We want the hinge to be on the width portion of the 2x4, not on the back side here, because there's going to be a lot of torque applied every single time you open this. So every time you open this raised bed, it's going to go like this. You're going to go like this with the wood. You want that opening motion to happen on this part of the 2x4. You want it to run in this direction. You don't want the 2x4 to be installed over here and to have it keep opening like this because this is going to apply way too much torque over time and it's going to wear off your hinge. So now that our lumber is laid out exactly the way I want it to be, we are simply going to mark the lumber and then we will simply cut all of our wood to the length that we measured. Once you pre-cut all of your lumber and you have everything laid out, we have to secure our wood to the tops of the raised bed. And in order to do this, we are going to use three inch treated wood screws. And you wanna make sure that you use something like a three inch because you want to make sure uh, it can deeply penetrate the uh, two by fours and it can sink into the bed itself. So a two by four is a nominal one inch thick, actually closer to about three quarter inches thick. So we want to have that uh, easy two inch penetration down into the bed so they are all secured uh, nice and tightly. However, you must pre-drill your two by fours beforehand because if you just drill the wood in, you can actually risk splitting the wood. And when you use a bit to pre-drill, it's important that the bit is slightly narrower in diameter than the diameter of your screws. So just hold the bit up to the screw and make sure that that bit itself is slightly narrower than the diameter. So get your wood lined up as best as you can so it's as square as possible. That all looks pretty good. Now we're going to pre-drill our 2x4s and penetrate into the base wood. And now that our one end is secured, we are going to line up and pre-drill our other end. 
And now that both ends are secured, we're going to put two more screws spaced approximately equidistant, just so we can add a little bit more structural stability to this rail right here. So we have the rails on our raised bed all set up. And this is going to be the base that the top of the hinged hoop house will sit on. You'll also notice that in order to pull some of the twists out of the board, I also have some screws that are installed diagonally from end to end in order to pull that twist out. And that will help the seal of the lid be a little bit better and hold in the heat better. And now that the railings have been installed on the bed, we are going to take the other boards, which we already pre-cut, to the exact same size as the boards that make up the railings. We're going to lay them on top, and we are going to screw them together, and that is going to form the base of our hinged hoop house. Okay, now we have all of our pre-cut lumber arranged for the top of the hinged hoop house. So the first thing that's the most important thing here is that both pieces of lumber, both the base piece of lumber that the hoop house lid is going to sit on and the top piece that will be the lid, they need to be as perfectly flush as possible. So I sanded them down to be as perfectly flush as possible because this is where my hinge is going to be for the one side of my hoop house. So we're going to pre-drill our lumber. And now that we have the outer screw installed, we are going to pre-drill in on the inside of this lumber. And now that we have our hoop house lid frame built, we're going to go ahead and we're going to start installing the trusses that will build the hoop house. And the thing that will hold the trusses in place is this one half inch Schedule 40 PVC conduit cap that we have a hole pre-drilled into the conduit cap because we need to secure this to the lid of the hoop house. And in order to secure the conduit cap to the lid, we are going to use these inch and a quarter screws. And it's important that you use either one inch or one inch and a quarter because you don't want the screws to be long enough that it is going to penetrate the two by four. They need to be shorter so they don't go all the way through. So now we are going to secure our half inch conduit caps and I'm going to install the first conduit cap one inch from the inside of the 2x4. And the reason why I'm doing this is because, let's say later I want to make this a double hoop house, I will be able to uh, add another inch and a half and space this one, the second cap, one inch off the back side. So if I wanted to have a two layer hoop house for additional insulation, I can do that. And what I did was I went around my bed and I marked one inch from the inside and one inch from the outside on the six locations that I am going to install the conduit caps. I'll be putting the conduit caps on each of the outside rails and I also measured to the exact midpoint of my 10 foot raised bed and I will have conduit caps installed at the exact midpoint. Now in order to build our support trusses for the hinged hoop house, we are going to use half inch Schedule 40 PVC conduit. And you can get this at any big box hardware store. I think this was $1.81 for a 10 foot length uh, from Lowe's. So they're really cheap, really affordable. And the problem with the hinged hoop house design is the larger the volume underneath the greenhouse fabric you're going to place, uh, the more air you're going to have to heat. It is the ground that is going to keep it warm. And I'm also going to use incandescent lights uh, in order to create artificial heat and make it even warmer. So the larger the volume of air underneath I need to warm, uh, the cooler it's going to be. So I want to make my hinged hoop house as tight as I possibly can. Uh, now I'm going to grow determinant and dwarf tomatoes in here. I'm going to try to keep them alive all winter. So I need 40 inches of space minimum to do that, plus a little bit of space at the top for me to run my strand lights so they're not contacting the foliage of the plants. So I want about 48 inches uh, from the top of uh, the soil and 44 inches from the top of this lid. So in order to do that, I cut this 10 foot uh, PVC conduit to a length of nine feet, two inches. And when I install that, that will get me 44 inches from the center uh, of the, uh, the top of the conduit to uh, the lid. And then it'll give me about 49 inches uh, to the top of the soil. So that is exactly what I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to take this conduit and I'm going to push it all the way down into our cap. 
So once I have this half inch conduit roughly in place and secured on the far end, I'm going to take these three quarter inch by one half inch conduit tees. And these conduit tees are what is going to hold the perpendicular supports in place. So you take the three quarter inch end, which is uh, bigger than the outer diameter of the half inch conduit that we're using. We slide them over and we are going to need three of these total. And then this half inch piece in here is what the perpendicular supports are going to plug into. So I'm going to throw all three of them down there and then I'm going to plug this half inch conduit into our cap down here, push it down so it's nice and secure. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to do the same thing to the far side. All right, now we're going to install the perpendicular conduit supports, which will act as the trusses for the frame of our hinged hoop house. And I have one of these half inch PVC conduits already plugged into one of the conduit tees on the far side. So this conduit is going to fall right about here, but I need to add about another inch and a half to two inches beyond that because we need to be able to plug this conduit into this conduit T right here. So we are going to cut it right about there and we are going to cut all of our conduit supports to that length. So if you're unsure how this conduit truss is installed, this is the half inch diameter portion of the conduit T. All we're going to do is, is just plug this part of the PVC conduit into this conduit T and that will pop right in there. So, so then what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to try to eyeball the center and I took a rough measurement here of where I think the center is. Uh, I'm going to take this and I'm going to through the bottom uh, I'm going to pre-drill this and the reason why I am pre-drilling through the bottom is because I'm going to install plastic on the outside. I don't want the end of the screw to come through and, uh, and tear the plastic. So we want to put the screw on under here. So then I'm going to take a very small screw that I have. It's probably only about a half inch screw. And I'm going to drill this through the underside where we just pre-drilled. And that is going to lock this conduit into place. And then I'm going to do that for the supports here and here and also on the back. Now that we have our perpendicular support trusses all screwed in and secured, what we need to do is we need to bring this piece up here and eyeball it to be as level as possible. And I'm not going to screw a screw through here because the plastic is going to drape over this and I do not want the head of that screw to rub against the plastic. So I'm just going to use simple electrical tape because it is uh, pretty waterproof and that's really all that we're looking for here. And I'm going to take this electrical tape and go in a little crisscross pattern and kind of make a cross here to just hold it in place. And this is not going to be supporting much weight, so you don't have to use a lot of tape. It just has to hold everything in place. So I'm going to get up here, and I'm going to do the same thing for the top section. Again, eyeballing this so it is as straight as possible. And now we'll just do a quick walk around of the hoop house. You can see how relatively straight everything came out. Overall, I think it looks pretty good. And here's a shot of the far side. Now to install our hinges, we want the wood from the bottom of the raised bed garden and the wood from the top of this hoop house to be as flush as possible. And I'm going to install one of these three inch zinc plated uh, hinges that I purchased off the shelf at Lowe's. You want to make sure that they are corrosion resistant. So you want to get either zinc plated, galvanized, or stainless steel. That way they will last for a long time. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this where I want it to be. And I'm going to take a permanent marker and I'm going to dot where I want to pre-drill. 
So it turns out that these little tiny screws that come with these hinges are absolute junk. So I'm going to pull all of these out and I'm going to replace them with these three inch screws because we really need this hinge to hold. It's going to have to hold a lot of torque as we open and close the hinge hoop house over and over and over again throughout the season. So we don't want these hinges to come loose. All right, our hinges have been installed and they are working beautifully. Now we are going to go ahead and we are going to pre-drill the upper trusses so we can add hooks to them because they are going to support our incandescent strand lighting, which is going to act as the internal heat source for our heated hoop house. And in order to do that, I'm going to use these. These are a box of ceiling hooks that I purchased from Lowe's. They were about five bucks for this whole box. And this is what they look like right here. We are going to pre-drill with an eighth inch bit and we are going to use these and screw them into the pre-drilled hole so they hang from the bottom. And this is what we are going to suspend our strand lighting from. A permanent marker dot on the edges of each of these spans and one in the center. And I did the same thing uh, for the next span. So we have one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and the same thing for the other half. So uh, nine per side, so there's a total of uh, 18 uh, pieces that I need to drill out. So I'll have a total of 18 ceiling hooks installed. We are going to take our ceiling hook and with a moderate pressure, we are going to hand tighten and screw that ceiling hook into the hole. And here's all of the hooks installed. Now that the greenhouse structure is complete, we want to make sure that we can open the greenhouse easily. And if you recall earlier, I had to prop the greenhouse structure open with a board. I don't want to have to do that long term. I want to attach chains to it so I can simply open the greenhouse lid all the way and then let the chains catch them. So in order to install the chains, I'm going to put these two uh, ceiling hooks embedded in the wood and I pre-drilled each of the holes that the ceiling hooks are going to go into so I'm going to simply hand thread these in and then tighten them with a pair of pliers. And you'll see that I have the top hook facing up and the bottom hook facing down so they will best be able to hold the chain. So now we're going to take the chain and we are going to slip part of the chain over the bottom hook and then I'm going to use a pair of channel locks to crush this hook to lock in the chain. And now that we have the bottom part of the chain attached to the lower hook, we are going to open up our lid all of the way and we are going to open the lid as far as possible until it's at about a 90 degree angle because we can't let the weight of this lid sit on these uh, PVC pipe trusses. They will get crushed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this length of chain and I'm just going to eyeball it. And that looks just about perfect. It's just about at a 90 degree angle. And now that the chain is exactly where I want it to be, I'm going to take a pair of hardened bolt cutters and I'm going to simply cut the chain. And then I'm going to take my pair of channel locks and I'm going to squeeze this together. And that will lock this chain in place as well. And now that the chain is in place, we can do the exact same thing to the other side. Now that the greenhouse structure is complete, we are going to attach our greenhouse film. And this right here is a 12 foot by 25 foot 6 mil greenhouse film roll and it costs about $50 and I did a lot of research on this material and I read a lot of reviews and I found a commonality between the reviews that were fatal flaws. A lot of people were complaining about this $50 price tag and they would go and they would buy uh, plastic sheeting that was six mil for considerably less money. This greenhouse film is UV treated. It is UV ray resistant. It lasts for four years. The plastic sheeting will barely last a summer. So don't save yourself 40% of the price when you're going to have to replace it every single year. You have to buy actual UV resistant greenhouse film. And in order to secure the greenhouse film, I'm going to use these half inch PVC clips. 
This will clamp it down and make it easier to install. Now that our greenhouse film is all on, we're going to use our half inch plastic clips to tighten it. And I'm going to try and pull this as tightly as possible here. And I'm only going to place the clips up here to hold the greenhouse film in place. And you have to be careful when applying the clips not to puncture the greenhouse fabric. Now we have to secure the long edge of the greenhouse plastic. So right here I have a furring strip that is pre-cut and pre-drilled. It has uh, four screws in it, uh, one at the ends and one placed every uh, two feet or so. And that is going to hold this, gr this greenhouse film uh, in place. Um, I left plenty of overhang here so I could kind of put my knee on here and pull it down nice and tight. So I'm going to secure this with the pre-drilled screws. Now I left this side even longer than the other side and the reason why is this is the side that I really need to pull down on to get the bit of leverage. So this side needs to be pretty tight because the tighter your plastic, uh, the better wind will be able to blow over it and uh, if you live in an area where there's snow, the better it'll shed snow. So you really want this to kind of be taut. Then we're going to pull the slack out of the greenhouse fabric by putting another clip on this support right here. And we're going to do that for all four corners. And now we have to pull all of the slack out of this part of the greenhouse. And in order to start that, I'm going to pull this piece right here nice and tight. And I'm going to place one of these clips on here to make sure all that slack stays uh, pulled out of there. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Now we're going to find the center of the slack, which is about here. And we are going to begin to tightly roll it up until we can ball up all of this slack. And this is one of those things that I don't care how good you are, you are never going to get this perfect. But this is why it's a backyard build we're doing for peanuts. Uh, so then after all of the slack is pulled out, we are going to take our pre-cut, pre-drilled furring strip that's already been pre-sized for this piece. We're going to use this to pull down nice and tightly. Now you have a decision to make you need to decide whether or not you want to remove all of the plastic that is overhanging your hinged hoop house. Uh, the problem with removing the plastic is if you try to take this plastic off during the summer and you remove it, you may not have enough slack to pull it nice and tight and you may not be able to reuse this plastic. I'm going to cut the plastic off with a utility knife because I made sure to purchase hinges with removable hinge pins. So this entire top will easily pop right off simply by removing the hinge pin and I can do that in the spring when we stop getting freezes. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to use my utility knife and I'm going to run it along the bottom 2x4 that I built the rails around my raised bed. Now that our plastic is trimmed, we are going to attach our handle, which has already been marked and pre-drilled. Now in order to ensure that our hinged hoop house is as thermally secure as possible, where the greenhouse plastic meets the wooden boards, we are going to install some weather stripping. We're going to run the weather stripping between the wooden board and where the plastic is seated in order to seal that gap up.
Now that the weather stripping is installed, we are going to install strand lighting inside of the hinged hoop house. And this is going to act as the heat source for the internal heating of the hoop house. So this is simply a strand of 100 incandescent Christmas lights that you can buy off the shelf pretty much anywhere for two to three dollars. And it is critical that you use incandescent Christmas lights, the old style, not the new style LEDs, because the new style LEDs, they give off very little heat. These are the equivalent of a 40 watt light bulb. So they will generate as much heat as a 40 watt light bulb. So these are just regular old Christmas lights. If you wanna go bigger, you can use C7 or C9 lights. They will generate even more heat. I live in a pretty mild climate, so I don't need a tremendous amount of heat. But if you live in a colder zone, you may do better with C7 or C9 lights because they give off a lot more heat. So I'm going to run this on all of the hooks that I installed that are hanging from the PVC conduit, and I will simply go from strand to strand, attaching uh, strands as I go until all of the hooks are filled. And now I have my strand lighting attached to the ceiling hooks, and this is two 100 light strands for a total of 80 watts. So this will give me 80 watts of heat inside of my heated hoop house. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to monitor the temperature inside and I'm going to see how this does for me. If it doesn't do a good enough job and I need more heat, I could always add another strand of 100 lights and that will be the equivalent of another 40 watts. That will give me 120 watts of heat. If that's not enough, I can add a fourth strand and get 160 watts of heat, etc., etc., etc. And the really cool thing about this is I have it hooked up via an extension cord to a wireless outlet that is controlled with an app on my smartphone. So if I'm anywhere in the world, let's say I decide to take a vacation and I see I'm going to get a really deep freeze one night, I can remotely turn my greenhouse on and off and heat it remotely. And if you're curious where I bought this wireless outlet, I will have it linked in my Amazon storefront in the video description. Everybody, thank you so much for watching today's video. If you found it helpful, please hit that like button. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please subscribe for future updates and more videos like these. Again, if you're curious about any of the parts that I use to build this greenhouse, uh, they're all linked in my Amazon storefront in the video description, as well as the other garden supplies I use in my garden. Again, thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see all of you again on the next video.